I would just like to thank the universe for bringing this outfit together. What up my channel? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie and you're watching. It's been a while. Shouldn't left you without a dope beat to step to. This is going to be a book haul and NB got sent a lot of books okay um I have 70 plus I I'm pretty sure it's 80 books here I have 80 books I have 80 books to cover in this haul my shelves are full so I don't know where these books are gonna go so let me know if you want to see a bookshelf organization vlog uh if you want to watch me just cry for 15 20 minutes you know i can make that happen but before we get into all of the madness that this video is going to promise i would like to take this time to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video what sponsor you might ask none other than book of the month book of the month is a very very popular and rapidly growing e-commerce subscription box that is consistently connecting readers with fabulous stories every single month i have worked with book of the month several times in the past and i absolutely adore this service so every single month on the first of the month their titles get released they get five of those picks like the most incredible books and you get to select one of them and then your pick arrives in a nice blue box book of the month is a really fantastic service because if you need to you can pause your subscription at any time with no cost to you and then resume it whenever it is convenient you can also skip a month if you're like yo i have too much to do i need i need to catch up on my reading you can just pause it and everything's going to be a-okay resume it when you are ready i love that they always feature a diverse array of books and they also feature different voices in their storytelling one of the biggest and best perks that book of the month offers and there are a lot of them is that some of these books are early releases so you get your pause on them before anybody else does there's a little bit of exclusivity factor and these books are all hardcover titles and you know those retail for like 28 32 dollars in some instances and you get that book at a rate that you just can't get anywhere else. Let us talk about the books that Book of the Month is centering this month in October. We have a big boy here, and this book is The Lincoln Highway. In The Lincoln Highway, we are in the 1950s, and our protagonist just got off of this work farm that he was sentenced to as part of being in the juvenile system. The warden's driving away, and he finds out that he's got two stowaways, two friends from the farm in the trunk of the car. Then we have a thriller, Everything We Didn't Say. When Juniper was only 19 years old, her life was turned upside down when her neighbors were murdered right outside of their barn and her brother was blamed for it and she had to move away and it looks like her past is coming back to haunt her once again. We also have The Perishing. This is a book about an immortal woman who is trying to recover her long lost memories, figure out what the heck happened, who she is, and where she's supposed to be in her life. Another exciting title is The X Hex, and this has one of my favorite tropes. We are following a witch who cursed her ex, and they have this amazing chemistry, and it turns out that the two of them are going to have to work together and so it is a second chance romance. Then we have a book by just one of the best authors in the entire world, one of my favorite authors and that is Colson Whitehead. This book is called The Harlem Shuffle. As a New Yorker I'm very excited about this book. We are following a man who lives on Strivers Row and you know he's got a He's got a little tricky past, but he's on the up and up. He's trying to be on the straight and narrow, and he gets involved in the heist of a lifetime. It just sounds amazing. And this author has won a Pulitzer, not once, 
but twice. So a really cool thing about Book of the Month is that they have these awesome add-ons. One of their add-ons is the Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman. And so this is going to be a good book for the spooky season. We also have a thriller by Leanne Moriarty, The Apples Never Fall. I've heard such amazing things about this thriller. Now, if you want to get your first box at only $9.99, just use the code BOWTIES. There's a link in my description box as well for you to check out and sign up. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring another one of my videos. I love working with y'all. Without further delu, without further... All right, let's just start the let's just start the book haul. We got a lot of books to get through. First of all, y'all need to watch my Come Book Shopping With Me and Jan Agaton vlog. The vlog is flopping and we're not gonna let it flop. Okay, I don't know why. My book shopping vlogs, they just never do well. And I'm hurt and offended. I'm going to share one of the books that I got in the vlog, which is Iron Widow. Now, this is going to be a NB book club selection. For those of you who don't know, I run a non-binary book club and it is awesome. It is called NB book club. That is the Instagram and the book club runs both on Instagram and we do live shows on YouTube as well. I do reels. I do posts. I do like non-binary education and tons of non-binary content. So definitely check that out. And this is going to be the book that we're reading in December. Now I am so excited about this book because we not only have a debut Asian non-binary author, but that author has given us a mech science fiction story. And I just can't wait. It is a revenge story. And just look at this beautiful freaking cover. Now, I also have The Drifting Classroom. This is a classic manga that I'm borrowing from a good friend. And I feel personally attacked because this is considered a classic. It came out in 2007. That, that's the bar for classics now? 2007? That's the bar? How old are we? I did not come here to be attacked not attacked. So this is a horror manga about a school, a children's school that just vanishes. It's just gone. Okay. And it is supposed to be so deeply disturbing, so deeply unsettling and disturbing. And the panels are just pretty cool. I'm excited. It's all in black and white and I'm ready for it. Okay. We also have one of my most anticipated reads of the world and that is One True Loves. I just made a TikTok about how Happily Ever Afters, the first book by this author, which came out early in January, I believe, is so underhyped. And what a boss, what a bad B, because she has come out with another book in the same year. I just can't. Happily Ever Afters is one of the best YA books I've ever read in my entire life. It's so freaking good. This is a book about a black girl who ends up going on this European travel cruise. And I made a video way earlier on in the year about how there's just not enough books about black people traveling and having like fun adventure stories. And um, I'll leave that, li that video linked down below if you wanna check it out. But I am so freaking excited about this one. I have here a signed copy of The Turnout by Megan Abbott. She is an amazing thriller author. I'm telling you, amazing, unparalleled, unprecedented, underrated. Now I haven't done it yet, but this sticker, this sticker gonna get moved over this sticker because it just ruins the whole cover. Look at this cover. Why are you here? Who invited you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got a little upset. Got a little upset there. But this is a thriller about ballet dancers. I am a retired dancer. I am ready. I am prepared. Then we have a science fiction book and that is Do You Dream of Terra 2. This is a sci-fi book by a black author, by a black author who is a neuroscientist and she runs this book club where she reads books and like reviews books that have neuroscience in them. And I, I, I just can't. And so this is a book about the earth being in ruins because we ruin everything that we touch as human beings. And we're trying to find this rumored planet that is supposed to be sustainable for human beings to live on and we're trying to colonize that planet but it's we're risking everything all of our last and final resources to find this planet so we can go ruin that one i have all's well the latest book by horror author mona awad and we read this for my patreon book club and the discussion that i had with my patrons over this book 
was a lot. It was it was really intense. I filmed the spoiler filled vlog and not me nor most of my patrons knew what the heck was going on. What the heck was going on in this book? We're following a woman who has really severe chronic pain. After that, nobody knows. Nobody knows what's happening. It is a retelling of a Shakespeare play, All's Well, and All Was Not Well. I have here Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is an arc that I'm so excited to get to. It is by an Asian author and it has mythology. It is a fantasy that is including legendary creatures and a powerful celestial emperor. I crave fantasies later on in the year. And what is stopping me from reading this? Nothing absolutely nothing. Then I have Grievers by Adrian Marie Brown. I am excited. This is Brown's debut novella. It's a novella about this mysterious illness that is hitting this town. It stops people in their tracks, literally mid-sentence, like mid-life. People just freeze. And I'm so excited about this. Then we have a book that I'm mad excited about. This is Living Growing Up Beyond Mexican Borders in America. As a Mexican individual, I'm so, so, so excited to read this book. I'm really grateful to Penguin for sending me this book. It, I know it's gonna mean a lot to me. So it's an anthology and it has poems and short stories and comics as well. And I'm really excited about the mixed media format. Now I have to give a big, big thank you to the subscriber who sent me this next book. This is from a subscriber named Amanda P. And the book that they have sent me is none other than the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I'm shook. I am shook. It is supposed to be like a horror book about this book club who is reading about vampires and then finds that a vampire is like hunting them down or exists. I was so highly anticipating this book on the year that it came out. I think it was like two or three years ago and we just never got around to reading it. So we're really excited about this. And I used to know the synopsis like to a T because I wanted this book so bad, but like I have this rule. I've talked about it so much on my channel. I have this rule. I do not buy books from authors that I haven't read, especially if they're not like BIPOC trans authors. Those are the authors that I will go out on a limb for and, you know, support um, like just right off the bat if I have the cash to do so. But I just really prefer to get my books from the local library in order to support local libraries. And also I like to do that because it's a great way to save money. But two, also because I hate buying books and supporting authors that have harmful content in their books. You know, I hate buying books and I find out um, that the author has just like written something that's very harmful and hurtful and I just gave them money. Um, so that's why I do things the way that I do. And I just love that y'all send me books and I always cherish these books forever. I like take your notes and I keep them in the book. And I also have like it's so freaking nerdy, but I have this stack of notes that y'all have sent with the books that you've gifted me and it's in my bedroom. I'm thinking of putting them on a clothespin line and just like hanging them because it just, it just means a really like a whole lot to me. So thank you so much, Amanda, for sending me this book that I have been dying to read and I'm really, really excited for it. I have another book here. It is a non-fiction book and it is called Word Slut and it is a uh, collection of essays. It is called A Feminist Guide to Taking Back the English Language and it talks about the ways that you know um, English has evolved to insult women and it talks about gender neutral norms and I'm really excited to see if it is also trans inclusive but I think that this is going to be a very enlightening read and it is pretty short. It's about 235 pages. Now this book is one that I cannot wait to read. It is an arc called Never Forgotten and it is by a Colombian author. It is presented in both English and Spanish. And y'all know that I recently lost my abuelita to COVID and she and I were working on Mi Español when she passed. And so I'm really excited to start reading books in Spanish and I'm consistently like working on my Spanish on my own, but um, I've just been really craving as like we get to her anniversary, I've just really been craving a lot of like Latinx speeds and like being centered around Spanish. So I'm really excited about this book definitely check this out. I'm not sure when this one comes out, but I believe it's soon. And it is, it's a pretty short read. Oh my gosh. Oh, yo. Okay. So as of right now, the English part of the book is 109 pages. 
And then, you know, I'm assuming that the Spanish part is 109 pages as well. So it's gonna be a pretty quick read. Then I have another arc. This is by the wonderful Darcy Little Badger. Y'all will know them as the author of Alatsoe, which so many of us were reading and loving last year. And this one is called A Snake Falls to Earth. And just like, look, look at that beautiful, beautiful cover. And just look at this beautiful, beautiful individual. So we're not actually sure what this is about. Oh my God, that's so exciting. So this is a breathtaking work of indigenous futurism, drawing on Lipan Apache storytelling traditions from the author of Alatsoe. I'm so excited. I will be reading this in uh, November for Indigenous Heritage Month. This comes out in October. So make sure you add this to like your pre-orders and wish lists or whatever. Put a hold on at your library so that you can get a copy of this and read it for, for Indigenous Heritage Month. Now this book I'm pretty stoked for. This is Fierce Fairy Tales, Poems and Stories to Stir Your Soul. I'm pretty stoked. This is from the author of Wild Embers. Have y'all heard of this book? Because we have not, okay? Oh, and so this is from a British Indian author. I'm really, really, really excited about this. And I'm not sure if this is YA or not. Okay, wow. Okay, y'all, I have to show you this. I didn't know this, but this book has just friggin' okay. Of course, now I can't find an illustration. Look at these illustrations. Ooh, he got abs. Look at that, look at that, they ripped. Dang, even a shadow ripped. How the shadow got better body definition than me? Y'all disrespectful. Disrespect. Ooh, I like this. I want to rip this out and put it on my wall. Don't worry. I'm not going to do it. Just calm down. Calm down. I'm not going to do it. Ooh, I have a mosquito bite in my leg. Okay, just a little itch. Oh, why is scratching mosquito bites so satisfying? Oh, long live the king. Then my beloved Jan has gifted me odd spirits. Jan made sure that we read Dowry of Blood and we loved it. We absolutely loved it. It was just everything. As you know, as you may know, Jan is my booktube bestie. She has been in a lot of my videos. Uh, I just, I really love her and any book that she recommends, we are going to read. This is a book about a modern ceremonial magician. So definitely a turn away from like the vampire <laughs> threesome gothic story that Dowry of Blood was. And it also has a secret society, which is a trope that I very much love. I know that booktube is riding the dark academia train very happy for y'all but i am riding the secret society horse okay and if y'all are wanting like a mixture of dark academia and secret society there is a show on netflix it is a netflix original and it is dutch it is called ares a-r-e-s it is really good. It is very disturbing. Uh, lots of lots of trigger warnings, but I just finished it and really, really enjoyed it. It's very cerebral and confusing, but beautiful. So definitely check that out if y'all like those tropes. Then I have Satisfaction Guaranteed. Now this is the book that a subscriber sent and I have no idea what this is about. And I, I wanted to wait until I was on camera in order to unveil this. So this is from Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Hope you and Jan buddy read this for a future sapphicathon. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to talk to Jan about, <gasps> ooh, okay. This protagonist has like a half shaved head. Can y'all see that? Uh, we're obsessed, or I guess it's a quarter, whatever. Y'all know I can't do math. So that's exciting. As y'all know, um, Jan, Agaton, and I run a 24 hour readathon every single month. We always have a guest co-host and we read sapphic books for 24 hours. This month's co-host is going to be Taz of Tasman May. I really, really love Taz and we're so, so excited to have her. Jan, if you're watching this, you need to look, oh, she, oh, she inherits a sex toy store. Uh, oh, with every imaginable kind of pleasure. Okay, we gonna set this aside because we wanna make sure, we wanna make sure we get to this. The next Avicathon is October 16th. It runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. in your own time zone. And I'm just gonna set this aside because we wanna read it. I'm channeling Alexis, okay. 
I hate myself. All right, so we're putting that on our TBR shelf down there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. We're just like running around lost in the sauce. We have so many books here. Our book room looks like a crime scene. Okay, so this next book is Walking the Clouds and it is an anthology of indigenous science fiction. Yo, my indigenous reads are just gonna be popping in November. I think I'm gonna do a challenge video where I try and read every single book on my shelves that has indigenous representation, you know, from indigenous authors, obviously. And I'm very excited about this. We absolutely love anthologies and this one is inclusive of like race and sex. And I'm really, really excited to discover some authors that we're not familiar with. And this cover is pretty dope. At first I thought my neighbors were like getting laid, which good for them, but it sounds like they're hammering something into the wall instead of, you know, hammering someone else. Then we were sent The Wolf of Orin Yara, which is known as the Bitch Queen series. And this is from a Filipino author. And the series is now complete. This is a gift from Daisy AM. So thank you so much to Daisy. I try not to say people's last names. I'm shouting them out just because of safety. So I hope that that doesn't offend anyone. I'm doing that very intentionally because I wanna keep y'all safe. Maybe I'm being too paranoid, but safety is key. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really excited about this series and just like, look, look. And right now we are just working our way through our fantasy books. Okay, we are we are a steamship rolling through the deep. I'm so freaking excited about this. I love books with unlikable women. Is that a trope? Because that's my favorite trope. Then we have a beautiful, beautiful book. It is called Violetta and it is by Isabel Allende, who is one of my favorite authors, even though I've only read one of her books, which was A Long Petal to the Sea. So here is A Long Petal to the Sea. The arc was incredible and oh my God, <laughs> this was back when I would put my tabs way, 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 way out, like all the way out of the closet, okay? Like me after high school. Um, that is so funny. This is just one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read in my entire life. So highly recommend this for Latinx Heritage Month. And if you wanna hear more about like my annotating habits, I have an annotating book tag, which I will leave linked down below. And it is so freaking fun. I watch all of your tag videos, those of you who do the tag. And it's just like, I think 16 questions about your annotating habits. And I'm really excited about it. So if you do it, please tag me because we really wanna see it. And then, okay, so the latest book by Isabel Allende, not sure what this is about. So it is set in 1920. She's so good with historical fiction. I don't think that Allende writes modern fiction and I'm a-okay with that because I love, I love, I love Latin history, even if it's fictional, you know? And just like, look at this cover, oh. Look at this cover, look at this cover. So we are following a girl named Violetta who is born on a stormy day in 1920. And she, you know, life as she knows it has been transformed by the Great Depression. So this is an epistolary, which I'm pretty excited about. And it's about heartbreak and sensuous affairs and poverty and wealth and loss and immense joy. I am so stoked about this. This book comes out in January of 2022, so I've got some time to read it, but I would really like to get to this sooner rather than later. So maybe I'll get to it in November. Then we have one of my notebooks. Not sure, not sure what this is doing here. This is a notebook that was gifted to me by Mi Madre, who just cannot accept that I don't like pink and color. So whenever possible, she makes it a point to send me things that are like, ha, color, as if like she can slowly just change my mind. It's cute. I love her. I, I personally actually find it endearing. So this says throw kindness around like confetti and it is glitter. Anyway, then we have a special edition book from Waterstones that we ordered because we do not care about paying rent. I saw this book and could not not have it. And that is the special edition of Song of Achilles. Look, look at this book. And it has this beautiful ribbon and it has this beautiful quote on the back. We were like gods at the dawning of the world and our joy was so bright, we could see nothing else but the other. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. The only thing we don't love about this is that it's not signed. But one day, maybe we can get it signed. And look, there's space for, to, for it to be signed. 
her signature is going to go right there. It's going to go right there. So freaking excited about this. And there's another special edition of this book that just came out. And I like that one even more. It's like green foil and gold. If y'all know what I'm talking about, comment down below and let me know where I saw it. It's so beautiful and I want it desperately. But I already spent money on this. And like, let's be realistic, Jesse. You can't feed yourself with this book. Although i'll be damned if i don't try then i picked up blood and honey from the library this is the second book in the um what is this awful series called serpent and dove i hated that book i have a rant review of it um if you want to check that out it'll be in the description box below and we're going to be reading this for a giving an author a second chance vlog and i've started it i started the audiobook and believe it or not not hating it. Oh, I'm going into it with an open mind. I hated Serpent and Dove almost more than any book that I've ever read, but I, I'm i down to have my mind changed. I mean, nothing's gonna change my mind on Serpent and Dove. But I have no problem giving like the second and third books five out of five stars if, you know, they're actually good. Then I hauled Rise to the Sun. A subscriber sent this to me and it was such a ride. I haven't done my wrap up yet where I will talk about this. It is a sapphic book about two girls who are falling in love at a music festival. It is the sophomore novel of Leah Johnson, the amazing author who wrote You Should See Me in a Crown. I do have some tea about this book, so I'm really excited to get to my review for this. Next up, we have a book sent by Book of the Month. This is Sherry LaPena's Not a Happy Family. I am very, very excited to have my first Sherry LaPena book. It is Sherry, right? It's not Shari. Shari is a really pretty name, if it is. I really like that. I would name a dog that. And this is no shame. I just think that Shari would be a cute name for a dog. Not that it's not also a wonderful name for a human being. I'm gonna stop talking. So this is a thriller and I really, really love the cover. I'm guessing it's about a family that's got secrets. Yep, they're rich, three adult kids, their kids suck, their father's vindictive. Did someone snack, snap after that dreadful evening? Okay, so your typical, typical thriller. Then we have The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. I am really excited about this because I've heard really, really, really good things. And y'all know that romance is not our thing. But I, you know, I'm down to enjoy a romance book if it's good. You know what I'm saying? So this is a book about a violinist, which is pretty cool. There's actually a violin where I saw a violin somewhere. Oh, yeah. So there's a violin on the inside cover, which is pretty dope. Her a tattooed motorcycle riding Quan Dieppe comes in. Their first attempt at a one night stand fails, as does their second and their third. Why are you giving this man so many chances? What in the male privilege? And obviously I have hauled these book of the month books that I mentioned earlier on in this video. And again, we have a romance book, The Love Hypothesis. Y'all know I've said it before. I will say it again. We can't stand romance, but this is a science romance and I can get down with that. I can get down with that. Um, let me know if you want to see a video where we recommend science fi or oh my God, not science fiction books, romance books for people who hate romance. Okay, this is the love hypothesis and I'm just, I'm pretty excited about it. It does have the fake dating trope, which isn't, I'm a bad booktuber because it's not a trope that I'm obsessed with. It, it just is what it is. It doesn't excite me, but it also doesn't turn me off. That's what she said. I also have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This is going to be my first Sager. Actually, I think we have, hold up. We done boys. Oh, that's not even my horror section. Not me not knowing my own books. Oh, wait, okay, that's why, because it's not actually on my shelves. We actually did read our first Sager last month in September. It was the latest one about the haunted house. I keep wanting to say Lock and Key, but that's the book by Joe Hill, which we also haven't read. And I love, love, love Joe Hill. And I really wanna read his comics. Um, but, okay, what up? Home Before Dark, right? That's the one about the haunted house and the writer. It, it was what it was. It was a book. I gave it three stars. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. And I'm told that that's his best book. So I kind of want to read The Last Time I Lied and, you know, see see if I actually like this better. We shall see. I swear, I thought I had Final Girls, but I guess I don't. I swear I have Final Girls. Oh, I do. We're not insane. We do have Final Girls. Maybe we should do a reading vlog for like a Riley Sager reading vlog. What do you think? I could read this. And part of the reason why I'm in the mood for this is because it's a floppy, short, mass market paperback. 
Unpopular opinion, love. Love me some floppy paperbacks. I love me my mass market paperbacks. Maybe it's because I used to read them as a kid. I don't know, but oh, not you shouldn't be alive. You should have died in that cabin. It was your destiny to be sacrificed. What a lovely love letter. So we don't know what the last time I lied is about and um, kind of don't care. And the last book I'm going to talk about in this book haul video is Skin Ship. This cover is so freaking stunning. I believe this is not, no, no, no. I think this is a thriller. What is this? So it is a collection from a breathtaking new voice centered on a constellation of Korean American families. So this looks like an anthology. This was sent to us recently and we're really excited to read this. It's about displacement and arranged marriages and uh, unfortunately domestic abuse. I'm pretty excited about this. This is from a female Korean author. Thank you for watching part one of this book haul. I think we got through a good selection of books. So freaking excited about them. Definitely stay tuned for part two of this book haul. Hey, I might even have to do three because I have three more stacks of books. We'll get to them when we get to them. Don't forget that my book of the month code is in the description box below. It is bow ties in case you missed it. Use that code to get your first box for $9.99. Thank you again to book of the month for sponsoring another one of my wacky videos. Uh, definitely check out the other videos that I have linked in the description box. I have a TikTok where I post daily. I also have an Instagram where I post daily. You'll see lots of reels and fashion posts over there. I also have a Patreon if you want to join that for some exclusive content. We are going to be reading Goblin by Josh Mallerman this month and I'm so excited about that. And then my Patreon exclusive video is a journal with me video and I'm really excited about that because y'all know I'm very very private about my journal spreads so I'm excited to be sharing those with my patrons. All right y'all if you made it to the end of this video Let's do two things. I want you to first comment down below with one book that you want me to prioritize out of all of these books. And why don't you leave a candle emoji or the word candle? I'm not sure why that is the word that just popped into my mind, but it's spooky, it's October, and I just think it would be wonderful to have candle emojis in the comment section. So that's gonna do it for this video. Check out my social media links. Stay safe, and I can't wait to see you in my next one.